Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week podcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. We are syndicated on J Rev Radio, Voluntary Virtues, and of course, go uh, download us on iTunes and Stitcher, and maybe watch us on YouTube because you can get to see our beautiful guests that we have today. I am Rob Mathias. And I'm Shire Dude. And uh, our guest today is none other than the one and only Derek J. Freeman, the Messiah of the Shire. Oh, please. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> the Shire Messiah. I like it. <laughs> well, you did, uh, you did sacrifice yourself on the altar of the state. You went on an exile, and now you're, you're back to bring he's, freedom to the land. He's risen again. Yeah, you've, you've <laughs> risen. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of uh, biblical references. I suppose the prodigal son would also apply. Oh, yes, yeah. it would. Yeah. Yes, it would. All right, uh, we have some announcements to make. Uh, first off, uh, we're all on panels at Keenvention. Woo! Yes, which is awesome. Uh, I am going to be doing uh, a direct action panel with uh, Garrett and a few other great people. And we're also going to be paneling a secessionist panel as well, which I'm still need to get my act together and get that finalized. Um, and also uh, Shire Dude. Yeah, I'm on the New Movers panel with um, Selfie the Outlaw and uh, the Desert Lynx and a couple other really cool cats that I actually haven't even met yet. So it'll be... Wait, wait, who else is on the panel? Uh, you'll have to go to keenvention.info to find out. Yeah. And uh, Derek, what, what panel are you on? I'm... Asking questions of the 101 Reasons to Move panel. Uh, so it's not really a, a panel on which I'm sitting. Oh, it's like so MC. So much as one, yeah, that I'm hosting. Because uh, we did Victimless Crime Spree last year. And um, people got to watch that, do a QA and a afterwards. But this year, uh, there's a new movie that's coming out called um, 101 Reasons to Move. And I, th I think that's the official title. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, it's about moving to New Hampshire and about the Free State Project. And so I'll be asking questions of the director and the producer. Well, Bo Davis is the director of that, so I am. He produced your documentary, so I'm very. It's like a, it's a the spiritual successor to Victimless Crime Spree. So I'm yeah. very, as a fan of his work, I I want I want to see this his work and he's been working on this for like, what 10 months now 12 months Bo Davis does incredible video work and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what 101 reasons to move has and me too I uh, I'm hoping that it reaches a lot of people because um, I've seen his he puts out like the like these shorts on his YouTube channel of like just clips of what already that he's filmed and everything he's put out is like huge it looks like almost to Hollywood level editing quality. You know what I'm saying? And it's unfortunately like a lot of us are just doing this on our free time and we don't have the, the greatest editing, you know, capabilities. And he's bringing like, he's really brazing the game in regards to like professional looking editing. Yeah, it's really fortunate to have someone around like MGM Studios following you around just documenting what life is like in the Shire. Um, it, that's something that I try to do a little bit, but obviously I don't have the level of equipment that Bo's working with or, or the skill. Well, so. you you do a fantastic job documenting as much as you can here. I mean, let's face it, you're always you're always uploading raw video and stuff like that. But Every day. I, I can't imagine that you have time to like edit all that because that seems like you're, you're spending so much time doing so much documenting that like you know editing takes a long time. I can't imagine mm -hmm. you have time to actually edit. No, rarely do I edit my videos anymore. I mostly throw things up raw, and that's worked out really well. Uh, let other people edit it if they want to. And some people have, have taken up the torch and decided to do that. Some people have taken my raw videos and now edited them themselves because they saw a need for that. But, uh, yeah, I think focus on what you do best. Oh, uh, that's capturing video. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, now, uh, so you're give us an update because uh, a lot of things have gone down in Keen as of late. Um, yeah. Give us a update on uh, both Ian and Rich, if you could. Okay, so uh, an update on keen activism. Uh, there's a lot going on. It's it's one of those hot times. There are hot and cool periods for sure, and this is a a hot period where we've got a few people uh, facing jail time. We've got a few people uh, in civil suits with the state, and um, some of those people include Ian Freeman of FreeKeen.com and Free Talk Live. He's facing 
two years. Actually, he was just sentenced today to one year in jail for uh, two years suspended on the condition of good behavior. So essentially, if he uh, doesn't get arrested, he won't be, end up in a cage. But that's conditional <laughs> for the next two years. Then um, James Robin Hood Cleveland is facing years in a cage for videoing police during an incident where uh, they used the Bearcat and he just wanted to capture video as part of the media. He's facing jail time for that. Um, they claim disorderly conduct and resisting arrest for uh, I did, I didn't even hear about recording that. video. Yeah, I don't just, remember. The, the James is facing this? Yeah, and uh, all, all that was was someone saw that, uh, the, bear, or that uh, the Bearcat was in use and got on one of these, which is a two-way radio, and announced to the other activists in the area that, the, hey, the Bearcat's here out at, behind McDonald's. Come on down and uh, get your video cameras. So a lot of us were there filming, and James got closer than anyone. Uh, the police said that uh, he could stand back in this area and film. That was okay. But then a different police officer who didn't know about that said, you're too close, and arrested him. By the way, I want to give huge props to James. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give him the props on the activism first. As a recovering fat guy, that guy has gotten huge and hugely in shape. Yeah, and I have mad respect for him because he. I, I did the same thing, and like I had I had a fat guy moment with him at Porkfest. Wow, where like we shared like our stories of how we lost weight for like an it was like a forty minute like moment where like we're sharing stories with each other. Um, but I got mad respects for him for that. But uh, yeah, he. Um, I also have huge respect for him because he got a, he got a, a case to go all the way up to the New Hampshire Supreme Court, which just happened uh, yesterday. Yeah, that's the other big case is the New Hampshire Supreme Court is deciding. I'm not quite sure exactly what they're deciding. Uh, and I asked everyone this yesterday. You know, what what is the question that the Supreme Court is, is there to quibble about? And no one really seemed to know. But we know what the whole event is about. It's these people who feed parking meters in front of the meter maid. And the meter maids don't like it. They want a perimeter around their bodies that would move with them, an anti-freedom zone, as I call it. <laughs> and uh, it's changed. It's been 50 feet. It's been 25 feet. They're not really sure. But uh, they want the activists to be not allowed to come within that zone. And so they think this would prevent them from being able to do effective Robin Hooding, which is, you know, preventing people from getting tickets. Well, what's funny is, like, that's not the... It seems like the city of Keene is asking the court to make a law, like an order, stopping them, like a, to create a buffer. But it's not the court's job to make a law preventing something from happening. That's the legislature. That's the city council or whatever you want to say. That, that's, that's not their, their job is just to simply judge whether or not something is constitutional or a law or whatnot. It's not really their position to make laws. Yeah, it seemed a lot like the state was going to the state and, and saying uh hey these people aren't breaking any laws but we don't like what they're doing can you make them stop <laughs> and what, what, was, what also was really interesting with watching that uh because I, I was at the uh the hearing as well and multiple uh, judges on the supreme court were asking questions about uh you know how these people are just 12 inches away. And I've watched, I'll be honest, I've watched way more than my fair share of raw video of Robin Hooding because I used to I used to watch all that all those raw channels like Freeman TV Raw and whatnot before I moved. So, like, I used to watch as much as I could before I got wow. here. Wow, so it was like you were walking the streets with Garrett, right? You were, like, there in his camera lens. Well, I mean, yes. Yeah, um, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Before you moved, that was your first view of Keen was through his lens, right? Yes, um, that's so cool. Through most of most of Keene and whatnot, and um, yeah, like it's kind of crazy, like walking through what I've watched on YouTube. Yeah, which is it's, oh, it's I'm, I'm surreal, not, it, especially when you get into the uh, the Central Square. Yeah, because it's so so much smaller than what it looks like on a nice camera. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah like we we walked it. Like, was it the first time we both walked? Yeah, we walked through it together, and we were like. 
wow is, it's smaller you yeah, know and like, uh, i'm like picturing like all the 420 <laughs> rallies and stuff like that yeah. like this is a tiny little location like i yeah. figured that like, this looked like a huge like town square and it's, it looks like, so much bigger on camera it's true mm -hmm. that's really yeah weird. yeah but it's like no uh, um Freeman TV Raw is like a, a lifeline kind of. That I'm so glad you watched that. Yeah. I created that channel to upload raw videos, and I can't believe – I think now it has over 500 subscribers, and uh, I never intended for a single one because it's like – it's a bunch of crap. If, yeah, if no, you, no, you know, no, Who yes. wants to watch that? 500 people plus apparently. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean sometimes there's gold. Sometimes there's – absolute nothing on there really to watch but usually yeah. there's gold yeah yeah but absolutely. there must be i don't know what like at least 20 videos uploaded every day or something s stuff to sift through oh yeah yeah for sure now mind you i'll be honest since i moved here i really haven't watched any you don't YouTube. need to watch it anymore. i mean i'm living it so yeah. I, I don't i don't listen or watch or anything like that I'm, i feel like i'm living it's sort of and nice creating the content too yeah, and creating it yeah. yeah i started a raw channel again because i was upset with uh, freeman tv raw so freeman tv was my original YouTube channel and then Freeman TV raw was where I was like no I'm not editing or doctoring these videos to, to be um, you know uh, to create a false reality you can check for yourself and verify but then I was like here all activists should use this channel and then it, it became too cluttered so I started a new one Derek J live so if people want to see like all the raw videos again uh, Derek J live is another channel where you can see that kind of stuff Nice, nice. I actually, uh, I have my own Raw channel now. I was All doing right. the uh, Rebel Raw as my Raw channel, which I don't upload as much because I'm not. Why not? I don't have to. Uh -huh. I, I work a lot. I there work are raw a lot. videos, man. It's I do. Click and Whenever drag. I go to something I'm, I'm filming, I definitely do. I know. So like you film you, it, so share it. I do. When I do film it, I do share it. Like Especially like all the DUI checkpoints yeah. uh, that happened in Manchester I went to, and I uploaded all those raw video. Uh, to that channel so and plus all my video that I took at pork fest is up on that channel um, So there's a, a lot of content. That What's I've the taken. last video you shot? I shot a uh, I shot a video of uh, The sunrise over uh, Manchester that was when? actually a, a couple days ago. Did you upload that? No, it's where it's, is it? It's, it's, in the, it's in the camera right now. All right. We got to get that online. Yeah, I will. I will. It's actually I, I, I uh, shot it from actually two different angles from two different positions. Wow. So like we moved to like one one point and then we moved to another point. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Because I also sometimes I try to document stuff that's more than just um, activism. Like I kind of mm -hmm. like like this whole show. The purpose of this show is more so just to document what, what people are like. The culture. Yeah. The culture. Yeah. I went hiking the other day. I went hiking in the New Hampshire. I mountains. saw with uh, with, uh, with 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 Jeff. Mm -hmm. I saw the pictures. I wasn't invited. I wasn't uh, invited. Actually, everyone was invited. I know, yeah, it was an open invitation. I know, I know, I know. That's something that I was surprised about when I got to the Shire was how much hiking people do. I guess I just didn't think about it. And you know, people don't post videos of them hiking on their activist channels, right? Obviously, so I do. You do too. You <laughs> really? Yeah, I put, I uploaded those videos. Oh, okay, cool, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I wanted. I wanted to go. I plan on. I really want to go up to what, what's that uh, expressway or that 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 highway like way up in the lakes region, like Cucamonga or what, what's the name of Sounds that? Sounds good, man. I have no idea. Anyways, it's what <laughs> you you know what I'm talking about. So she knows. She knows what she's 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 smiling at me. She knows. I probably butchered the name of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, but no, because the leaves are changing. Like th right now, like this moment in New Hampshire looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, like it's I, I pictures cannot describe how beautiful like it is right now in New Hampshire. Oh my God, no way! In fact, when I was up on the mountain and looking down at all the, the colorful trees of reds and pinks and golds, someone behind me was saying. I think this is the screen they use for the Apple screensaver, you know, like Apple TV photo. I'm like, yeah, but that, I mean, there's no way a big, n as big a screen as you can get, there's nothing that could compare to what this vision is. I mean, you can see the curvature of the earth. You can see mountains as far as the eye can see. And each one is comprised of this little tiny dot pixel of like bright pink or, or red or gold. It's, it's just so beautiful. Yeah, I need to. I need to get myself in gear. And I've been doing a lot of leaf peeping, actually. Yeah. They call them leaf peepers here if you yeah. come here just to look at the leaves. and um, But every time I take a picture of like a tree that I see, it never looks as bright and colorful as it does in real life. 
take a use on your on your phone. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna take it with a phone, you know, well, obviously use a nicer camera if you're going to. Yeah, I try to use like my HD camcorder, yeah, and yeah. it's still like does, it's does it have not an H- quite there. If it has an HDR mode, that brings out more colors in a photo. Oh, okay. Yeah, do, hmm. do that. That's what I try. I try to do when I'm taking when I'm taking photos. HDR mode. HDR mode on your camera. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, how is Rich doing? Oh, Rich is awesome. I picked him up when he got released from jail. So for those who don't know, Rich Paul is a pod activist who inspired me to move to Keene because of his courageous civil disobedience, uh, openly smoking cannabis in front of the police and and, um, peacefully resisting on behalf of the drug war, uh, ending it, that is. And um, he was recently incarcerated in connection to selling cannabis and a violation of probation essentially uh, continuing to smoke cannabis while not allowed um he was released after i think he he's been in there oh gosh i don't know how many months if, if either of you guys know speak uh out. i believe well this last time he went the he went in right before pork fest mm. uh um, june maybe yeah it was the beginning of june uh when like the whole chalk wars were going on in Keene? Yeah, so maybe about four. five months, four yeah, or five four. months or so. Yeah. So um, as soon as he got out, that was at 6 a.m., and I ha- I do have the video posted on my Raw channel so people can watch the full half-hour segment from the uncut Rich walking out of jail to we go into my car, smoke a little bit, <laughs> go <laughs> go to Central Square smoke a little bit and then we go to <laughs> breakfast <laughs> nice that's that's beautiful yeah I have to, i'll have to watch that i got the um i didn't get uh, much time to talk to him uh yesterday because he was at the hearing as well for uh the robin hooders um but uh, it was good seeing him free you know definitely uh out of jail so i'm happy that he's out do you know what he's going to be up to yeah he says he wants to be focusing on nh jury which is this organization that spreads the word of jury nullification, a juror's right to nullify bad laws. He sees that as probably the greatest, um, I don't know, like point of control. Like people forget, they think they've only got one power over the government. That's the voting booth, you know. No, but that's they, not. Yeah, but don't forget that you, you've got the um, jury booth as well well one thing beautiful in new hampshire is that that's actually a law in the books as an actual defense even though his he used that as a defense and yeah. you know, it didn't work it out didn't work him. out but now that might that, that's being he- also heard by the new hampshire supreme court um but uh speaking of jury nullification uh myself and riaz and hopefully andrew here are you yeah com- are you coming monday morning definitely all right so monday morning what are you doing well, we're doing jury nullification at the the courthouse right down the block Cool. Right down the street. So that's awesome. Yeah, we kind of dropped the ball in the last month or so on uh, jury notification. Kind of stopped doing it back in the beginning of September. So we're trying to pick it back up before it gets really cold. Yeah, it's important that um, jury notification outreach take place, not just everywhere, but in one central location. Like I would like to see the victories work in New Hampshire. Like one of the reasons I hand out. Um, don't take the plea deal literature each week at the local court in Keene is because I want to see over time Keene have statistics that show provably that that people take more tickets to court that take you know more citations and victimless crimes um, complaints to court I would like to see more resistance happening um, and, and see if it measurably makes a difference Oh, absolutely. And another reason why I do jury nullification is because it feels good. Like, it feels good doing, I know that sounds weird to say or whatnot, or maybe almost selfish on my part, but I like activism where it feels good. Well, why does it feel good? To me, it feels good because I know, honestly, I don't know if I'm helping or saving someone, but at least in that situation, I can possibly save someone from being caged for a victimless crime or, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can leave, I leave doing jury nullification happy. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I hate, you know, honestly, I hate blo- cop blocking. I don't like it. It's a necessary thing to do, but I don't, I don't feel comfortable doing it. 
You know, yeah. I don't feel well, ha- I don't get like a, a I don't get a happy rush after like you know talking to police and like filming them and whatnot. Well, like cop blocking is reactive, but handing out literature, doing outreach is preventative. So it's like you know you're trying to prevent this disease from happening, and uh, the you know the, the disease is people going to jail for victimless crimes, and so you could really have an impact. Just, it's just one juror one can juror, make the difference, it, either to hang the jury or to speak with the other jurors about, uh, hey, maybe we should all vote not guilty, which is what happened in the case of Doug Darrell. I don't know if you're familiar with no, that man. No, who's Doug Darrell? Doug Darrell is a man from New Hampshire who grew 15 marijuana plants in his backyard. The government used spy helicopters to determine that he was growing in I his backyard. And that, even though, like, so let's set aside how creepy that is and just pretend that the government has the right to use helicopters to spy <laughs> on what's in your backyard. He used the justification that uh, he's a Rasta and that it's his religion to um, grow cannabis. And the jury said, okay. Now, it just so happens that one of the members of that 12-person jury was a Free State Project participant. <laughs> well, that's all it takes. Uh, yeah. And yeah. She, she called into Free Talk Live to talk about how she was able to engage with the other jury members some of whom were very stuffy and saying ah just let it you know i'm hungry let's go to lunch and let's say this guy's guilty get it over with and then others who were like well you know maybe we do have a, a chance to make an impact here and maybe this is silly and they eventually did all vote not guilty and got that guy um his conviction overturned it's a shame there wasn't a free stater on rich's trial unfortunately well there needs to be more of us Right. Yes, that's why uh, people need to move, and uh, hopefully someone out there that's watching this. Yeah. You know, hopefully this is inspiring you to move. I'm talking to you sitting in sitting in some uh, uh, apartment somewhere in some city where you feel like you're alone because you're a libertarian and you seem like you're the lone nut. Come here and be nuts with us. Well, it's, <laughs> it's totally apparent that numbers make a difference, and we see it proved all the time with the different activism people do. For example, last year's Keenvention, it was widely advertised that people would be able to participate in Robin Hooding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, unfortunately, the city heard about that and said, yeah, we're not going to enforce parking over the weekend of Keenvention. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, that was hilarious. About that, yeah. That's because numbers make a difference. They knew that there would be like 300 or so people walking the streets with quarters, and they said, okay, this is not worth our time. And it would have been pretty bad publicity <laughs> for them, too. <laughs> 300 Robin Hooders. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. it would have been a nightmare. But uh, that's just one example that numbers make a difference. And if you feel alone, which you probably do if you're doing activism, uh, libertarian activism anywhere but New Hampshire, um, you know, check out what's going on here. There are so many different things. I, so, most people recommend freestateproject.org. I don't. I recommend they watching don't. Ridley Report. That's oh, what got me. But yeah. Ridley doesn't. He doesn't, he doesn't put doesn't out new put stuff, stuff anymore. anymore. He doesn't put yeah. out new stuff anymore. When I got into Ridley, it was like 2007, 2008, 2009. Those, that I think, were his like golden age years of Ridley because he was getting all sorts of Ron Paul info. There was all sorts of Civ Dis happening in, in Keene. Oh, the in topless Andrew. open carry protest. I really like that video. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good one. Uh, I used to I used to watch Dave Ridley like religiously for like yeah. at least a year, if not longer. Um, yeah, he put out great content. I always, I'm, I've made a joke that I want to out Dave Ridley, Dave Ridley, but I, what? <laughs> yeah, I, w- I really want to. I really want to like go to oh, out, out out Dave, Dave Ridley, Ridley at Dave okay. Ridley. Yes, yeah. I not see. not with the you know his little jingles. And I thought stuff you were like gonna that. out him like there was some oh, secret. No, no, <laughs> out Dave Ridley him. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, and like actually go to like you know government meetings, status meetings, and ambush them and ask questions. Oh man, when we like went that. to that one cops meeting, yes, here in Manchester, that was horrifying. That was, that was, that was a well for on all honesty, that was for I don't know for for you, but for me, that was literally like a test run. Neither one of us have ever gone to like a status meeting, and uh, we went to. Oh, they're horrible. They are they're so boring. Yes. don't go. Don't waste your time. Don't waste our time. No. Okay. Well, there's I mean, nothing to be gained. Only people who really enjoy boring stuff can can we, endure that we went and to, make something We went to the uh, Manchester Police Commissioners meeting with cameras and uh, filmed the entire. Was that thing. the one at McDonald's? Different one. 
Yeah. Why would you go to anyone that wasn't at McDonald's? <laughs> There's one at McDonald's? They, they do coffee with a cop um, pretty regularly. That's what they call it, coffee with a cop. I didn't even know this. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll have to find out when the next one is. Riaz usually has the up and up on that. I'm really looking forward to the election season coming up. Why? Because I want to said no like, anarchist <laughs> ever. <laughs> no, because it seems like it seems like great. It seems like great uh, content to cover. Like you know, you can ask like Santorum if he's ever Googled himself, stuff like that. Is that what you're looking forward yeah, to? Yeah, I'm looking forward to like you know lampooning the election and making fun of all the politicians, messing with people, having fun. You know, they usually come to Keene and Manchester. Those are both hot spots. Yeah, for politicians are going to come to New Hampshire. Yeah, apparently Rand primaries. Paul was in Manchester. Yeah, at a Dunkin' Donuts. At a Dunkin' Donuts, Donuts this morning. This someone, morning, someone posted on my wall like you know, hey, you know, Rand, <laughs> Rand Paul was in your backyard, and he he literally posted a selfie of himself videotaping himself saying. Is at Dunkin' Donuts getting a healthy breakfast, which isn't at Dunkin' Donuts. No, I would vote. I would vote for Rand Paul if he said that he really loves pumpkin, pumpkin, uh, <laughs> pumpkin coffee because I love pumpkin coffee. So right, and, wow, uh, you and no one else. He That's likes so what I like. Love it. Like I got it right here. I love. He's just like me. You yeah. know how rare that is. <laughs> what pumpkin coffee? The, the the fact that you like pumpkin coffee in October it's so rare no oh, no one man. else like, <laughs> I wish I had it I'm year so round. sick of pumpkin coffee give me any other flavor this you don't realize how long I waited I waited I remember like what? add your own add your own pumpkin flavor you can't you can find do it all it. year well I need to get a uh, a stash like <laughs> to save up for like the summertime where you can't find it. All right. And to get the syrup going and whatnot. The, the, can we start the, a pumpkin, the pumpkin spice needs to flow. Can we start a pumpkin sauce black market that just goes year round? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. That's what, see, yes. Now you're thinking. Get, <laughs> get on that. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I love pumpkin coffee. I'm sorry. But that, that, I would vote for him for that if he came out and said that. Anyways, let's get. Uh, I want to get dark, not dark, but like, whoa, whoa. Wanna, <laughs> All right, I want to get. Um, Should we dim the lights? No, no, no. <laughs> I want to. Like we always, you. Everyone knows you for activism and stuff like that. But I, I kind of want to talk about your you as a human being. Oh God. Okay. Um, Should I get on the therapist chair? No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, God, so many stuff to ask. Uh, all right, let's start with an easy one. What's your favorite moment here? My favorite moment here? Yeah, in the Shire. What what has you've you've had a lot of experiences here. What was your favorite? Like looking back, what what was your favorite moment? Um, I've had a lot of great moments. Um, many of them uh, involved activism. Uh, one of the, I think one of the great moments was during the speech this is one that any, anyone can enjoy if you uh go to the videos of keenvention and watch jj Schlesinger's keynote speech he really summarizes all of um keen and new hampshire activism up until that point it was late 2013 and talking about the keynote at Keenvention last year? Yes. Yes, that was a great speech. Absolutely. I was going to bring him up in the, in the next question, but yes. That yes. speech had me on edge for all of an hour and a half or however long it lasted. It felt very short, but then I, I looked later and realized, like, oh, my God, look at that time. It went way over. And, like, I had no idea at the time. And it just – it put those butterflies in my stomach. It had my heart thumping. It was that kind of moment. I had the pleasure and honor – um, it was like the first month and a half. It was in March. It was in March. So it was, well, I've only been here a month and a half, and I'm chilling at the Quill, and JJ's there, and I watched his. I watched that speech before I moved here. Okay, mm-hmm. and uh, I had the uh, honor and pleasure t- of him giving me like one on one, like an, it was like an hour, two hour long conversation about how this place changes you, and I didn't really understand that <laughs> at first but i'll be honest since i've been here i don't even recognize myself three months ago well alone six months ago wow all right like my life is so emotionally and philosophically and just different so can you help uh you then how would you if you could talk to you then how would you help yourself understand what jj was saying i don't know if i can say anything else to help me like with it like he uh he nailed it and well what did he say then just about how this place changes you how um you won't realize it 
until it already happens and how uh it will make you evolve faster like yeah than ever it's like, an incubator yes for, for uh freedom activism yeah like va- literally a week here. and and free thought like uh anarchist thought I yeah yeah i mean because you know. you're you're surrounded by like-minded people so it's not like you're Instead of being on the offense, I guess, against status and stuff like that, you're on the defense against anarchists. Yeah, and you, and it's like a completely different way of like, like thinking. Well, also, yeah, you're starting from di- from different, um, what's it called, like fundamental assumptions ab- about uh, about life, like the non-aggression principle. You start with those things, and then you get to have your little minute disagreements about like, uh, you know, about the meat, like the small in. In, in unimportant meaning uh, yeah, yeah, differences yeah. between people's beliefs, but you know it accelerates that that type of uh, thought here. Uh, yeah, you know, because I, people are having those conversations. That conversation still sticks out to me because it's when oh, right, I really right. like I paid attention to yeah. like my my evolution as a human being since I've been here, um, and I've been on this like crazy roller coaster of how my life has completely changed. Like I came here. Um, I came here with the I- the ideology of live free, but I'm now living like this love free ideology. Mm. And but I want to know though, how has this place changed you? Oh, um, well, hmm. like who were you before you moved, and who are you now? I feel like I've seen you change. Um, just from watching Derek J's Victimless Crimes Free until meeting you and experiencing you in the past few months um i don't know what it was you you uh, i can't really put my finger on it actually you do dress better <laughs> better than before oh yeah that's kind of you to say i used to always wear like a shirt and tie and uh that vest thing hmm. um what do you mean better you dress was better I, was i shabby then what no you, no no there? maybe he's just more comfortable <laughs> now yeah, that's what know. it is. It's no, just you, like you, the air you, about him. Yeah, you have more swagger to you now. Oh. Well, oh. I fill out my clothes better. I was 21 when I moved here. Wow, you know, I'm I was a very young man, you know, and like now I'm 25. So it's think about the journey that you make anytime you go from 21 to 25. I've had that experience here in the Shire, and that's been like amazing. So I mean, I w- I don't I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, you know, when I got into my heavy activism, I was still 21, uh, ready to, you know, face the world and, and, uh, I could endure a couple of stints in jail and some time away reflecting, thinking about life and, uh, yeah. How has it changed me? Well, you know, it's, it's been really weird being able to say like when I was in jail, you know, to start a sentence. <laughs> and that's something that uh, you don't realize how much it makes you stand out later when like uh, you're talking with your old friends and stuff. So, um, yeah, going back to Philly, some things I just I don't I can't relate uh, to things that I just don't think are, are very important because, uh, you know, this living here has helped me. Um, focus on what I really value and what I really want to spend my limited time here on earth doing you know if uh, I I had great parties for example in in Philly like it was party every night great time still is when I visit but um, in New Hampshire like I want to focus on doing the the stuff that I think is important to do before I die (laughs) like you know like standing for something (laughs) That's no, it. I hear you. Yeah. So th- it's just changing the way that you prioritize. Yeah. Right. You prioritize your life now because you're here or well, it's it's uh it's it's become my entire life. My my yeah. I mean, the Shire is my life. I I have turned my every waking minute into uh producing something for this free society of the future that I'm constantly dreaming of. You know, from the minute I wake up to the second I fall asleep, like I'm, I'm working on the freedom project in some way. Like today, you know, I went and immediately got up and went to court to go film Ian Freeman's trial, interviewed him afterwards, you know, went went to breakfast, took some documentation, photos of that, um, uploaded them all when I went home, then started working on the store at 101 Deals is a thrift store porcupine owned by, owned by free staters. And, um, 
you know, then came here to go produce Liberty Media, you know, and it's like this every day. There's always something to be done. So, yeah, what did I do before then? You know, I was a fundraiser for Greenpeace and I was partying, drinking most nights or, or smoking and uh, going to clubs or something. And like, it just, that's fun, but it feels like a waste of time, especially compared to like all the fun and, and the satisfaction that comes from doing more productive things. But have you ever, um, have you ever felt like you're burnt out? Oh yeah. Yeah. I felt burnt out. It happens to everyone who like gets in real deep. Like I was doing free agents radio news at one time and I was facing five different trials at once. Like, can you imagine five different trials were coming up and I needed to keep producing daily five minute audio, video news reports, collecting, you know, news from around the world and, talking into microphones and editing audio and updating blog posts and trying to create this network and like, oh God, my head was spinning and I started feeling sick. I wasn't eating. You get burnt out and then you're like, I give up. And then you don't do anything for like, at least that was my experience. I couldn't do anything for weeks. Um, and I just needed to disengage, like just sort of let other people's activism passed me by. Oh, you guys are doing a sine wave. Cool. All right. I'll hang by. I'll hang, hang back. And, um, yeah, I think it's important to take breaks or at least to just pace yourself. I feel like by now though, I've been doing professional activism for four years. I've figured out where my groove is. I take breaks when necessary, but I don't feel like I get burnt out anymore. Like I used to. Well, I do quite a lot of activism every day. Yeah, you, you do more the you do a, a hell of a lot more than what most people do. Like, well, I've made I barely, it. My I feel like I barely do anything. But know? I've made it my career. That's the important difference. Is I I I burn the ships, you know. I made sure this is my only, um, this is my only option to succeed or or, you know, go broke trying. I I'm uh, and it's it's been working out. I've made this my career to do activism. The things that I think are important. Um, you know, I plan out like two months in advance all the different things I'm going to be doing, recording and shows like this and stuff. And, and it's been working out. So, uh, yeah, if people like the, the different sorts of things that I'm doing and they want to see more of it, you can go to DerekJ.me and find all the different uh, videos, blog posts about what I've been doing. Okay, now, everyone, really, you really got your start because of Victimless Crime Spree, which... I don't know. Yeah. Would you, you want to you want to admit this on air? Oh, with him? Yeah. Well, yeah. No, I've I've told this to his face too. Oh, I didn't know if you um, did. I don't know if I have or not. Really? Well, yeah. Derek J's victimless crime story was the thing that got me to sign the statement of intent. That that was what that was the deciding factor in me moving. Was watching that movie. Wow. Same, same yeah. here. I signed after wow. I watched that. Yeah. Wow. And we didn't even know. This is crazy. We both did. And the then same we thing. met and we like shared stories and we're like, oh my yeah, gosh, no me too. Way. Yeah, yeah we and here you are on our show now. Hey, yeah. <laughs> that is really cool for me uh, to hear that. I know you've shared that with me before, but sometimes that, um, I it just, it, I don't know. I, I can't believe it because like I idolized people like Kevin Smith, um, and I would listen to these uh, audio tracks of movies and like I, I wanted to make a movie that inspired people, and finally it happened. Finally, I did. Uh, that, that's really satisfying. Thanks for sharing, guys. Well, it was uh, it got us. It got me to sign. It got me to move. So I'm. Well, I'm what was it? What, like, uh, it, well, obviously, the movie Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. It has my name in it, but it's not just about me. It's obviously well, it's, it's about what? all the things that happen in Keene and New Hampshire and all yes. the, this peaceful resistance that happens here. So, like, was there a, one of the acts of peaceful resistance, like Tally getting arrested, walking into the courthouse with a video camera, or the Shire Choir, or just all of it, or what, the what was big it about? Well, you can go ahead first. Was there oh. any of it that, you that really stood out to you? Oh, that's that's a tough one. Where you were like, oh, this is really badass. Like, I remember there um, some of the things that made me say, like, wow, these guys are badass. I need to go join them was um, seeing videos of the um, Lauren and Jim dressed up as Nazis protesting the national ID law. <sighs> Yeah, and they were saying like they were doing street theater, like sign up, get your papers, you know. And they were all like for it, you know. And uh, it made people question whether or not they were really for this new national ID law. And it was like fun and creative, and like I was like, yeah, I want to go be a part of what they do. I want to do street theater like that. That one sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I think watching Derek J's victimless crime spree. 
Um, it was uh, the, the 420 rally was obviously like a really like that yeah, was a that great was scene. Oh that was God, seen yeah. so many people like come out and support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 420 rally, and I filmed that on a flip cam. <laughs> so hard to believe. That was what I came with uh, when I started here in New Hampshire. Was I brought my sixty dollar flip cam, and um, yeah, walking through the state house. I hadn't even been here a month when I filmed that. It was 420 at Concord State House here in New Hampshire. About 400 of us walked through the state house right after smoking up with Rich Paul, of course, leading the charge. And the governor, who was not the same governor that we have at the time, uh, have now, uh, was so terrified of the, this throng of stoners coming towards him that he escaped through the back door <laughs> and actually was absent at the time we reached his office. It was uh, just one of the most incredible times. And since he was absent, we went down to, to the bottom of the state house again and sang uh, Weed -a Claus Christmas carols down in, in the lobby. It was so amazing. Not only that, like, oh, we're taking over the state house, but like people were armed, which is perfectly legal to do in the state house. The guards tried to come over and like stop the the singing at one point, and uh, a swarm of cameras immediately surrounded this guy and was like, "What are you doing? You know, you're trying to stop these people from singing? No, you're not." <laughs> like he backed right off. It's just amazing to see. And again, numbers made the difference. Oh, absolutely. That's one thing that was the probably the biggest thing for me was actually seeing the amount of people that actually cared and came out and did something yep. in multiple situations. There's always a group of people or more doing some sort of activism. It wasn't by yourself. You had support. Um, just seeing that support was yeah. huge. And it's so creative too. the Christmas Carol stuff. I love it. Oh, absolutely. Now, speaking of victimless crime spree. Yeah. Would you do it again? Um, yeah, I mean, not today. The situation is different, but yeah, do I mean, is the question, do I regret what I did? Like, would I do it again knowing yeah. the result? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. You would, absolutely. Yeah, I, I followed my heart. You can't, you can't look at your decisions and say like, oh, that was a bad decision, I, you know, when you followed your heart. You, you, you know, that's the... That gets a pass. You're like, all right, I fucked up, but oh, am I allowed to curse? Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, that's fine. All right. No, um, you, can, you can drop F-bombs as much as you want. Curse it all. Up. I normally don't. I keep most of my content family-friendly because I have little sisters. But mm -hmm. um, I, I messed up. It must be really weird hearing you curse. I don't, I don't, yeah, you're, not the, <laughs> you're, you're not like a, you know. I'm not the type. You're not yeah. the type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I made a lot of mistakes, but I wouldn't um, change anything about the decisions I made because I, I don't think any of the decisions I made were immoral. What mistakes do you think you made? Well, I it's um, it's poking the tiger like the <sighs> victimless crime spree would have been a tragedy if there were no movie. If it were just things that happened to me, that would be horrible. Yeah, it would be the worst experience of my life and I'd have nothing to show for it. No, absolutely. The fact that it was filmed and made into a documentary um, made it all worthwhile. I would imagine that's the only redeeming quality about that whole time of my life you know think about like yeah. how much pain and suffering and money and you know uh criminal history uh, all the uh, losing my jobs reading um, an article about that movie would not have gotten me to move right like if it was just in, like on, on paper mm -hmm. i wouldn't have done it yeah and th there were plenty of blog posts about the the things i was arrested for and um, tons of people were watching on YouTube who follow Free Keen, and they they knew about the arrests. But putting it all together in one movie, I think, is what really it told the story. And um, the 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 benefit of victimless crime spree is that now that I've done it, no one else has to. Right? The the, the <laughs> just watch that movie before you think like, oh, I'm just gonna live free and take the consequences. Like, hey, done that, and uh, it was very dangerous. Almost lost my life. And I hope that, uh, you know, you can live free, but there there has to be a more creative way. We have to find a, another way, like using Bitcoin or using the underground economy. There are all sorts of creative ways today to peacefully resist without openly disobeying and, and doing things like smoking pot in front of cops. Like, yeah, it goes and proves the point that the police are going to use violence against you no matter what peaceful thing you're doing. 
But that point's been made. Don't hurt yourself. You know, don't poke the tiger. That's what a lot of the cr criticism came towards me during these events from my friends, from people in the Free State Project. They were like, what the hell is wrong with you? You know, like you're, you're just hurting yourself. There's, there's nothing to be gained from this. And um, yeah, so oh, would right. I do it again? Yeah, but um, I don't recommend what I did to other people. You know, just watch the movie and, and gain what can be gained from that. Well, I mean, a lot, for me, like a lot of people need to pick and choose their battles of what they want to do activism for, how much they're really yeah. willing to risk in yeah. regards to like, you know, jail time or just, you know, like for me, like this, like this is a, a risk, like just putting this show out. I'm putting my, you know, we're putting ourselves on the internet. Yep. You know, it's Google. You, you can Google it, you know, um, risking, you know, a lot of different things, just putting this on. Well, the nail that sticks up is the one that gets nailed down, gets hammered down, right? So yeah. you, you're putting yourself up there, so you, you become a target. I don't yeah. like that analogy at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't, wor don't, don't worry. Don't worry. You, Shire Dude YouTube channel will be like a couple million subscribers, <laughs> and like you'll sell like a billion of those shirts that you're wearing. So don't, don't, don't worry. You'll, you'll, you'll be fine. <laughs> So I don't mean to belabor this point, but this comes up a lot, and I don't really know how exactly to express it. It sounds really weird for someone like me, you know, the star of victimless crime spree, to say, like, don't do this type of civil disobedience activism. It's not good. It's counterproductive. It will hurt you, and, and you'll gain nothing. Um, that's the case for most people. I truly believe that uh, is the reality, and this is just lucky. The only thing that... Um, the only reason this was beneficial is because the movie was made. So, like, yeah, I don't recommend people do that. If you want to, if you want freedom in your life, there are other ways to do it. Moving to New Hampshire will increase the freedom in your life almost certainly. Uh, if you're moving from anywhere else in the U.S. Well, absolutely. Like, I, uh, it's weird. Like, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable. Liter literally, just dry. I have to, sometimes for work, I have to go down the mass. Oh, I hate it. I can't stand it. I get like I see the the state line on, like, on my GPS and I cringe for a little bit. Yeah. Though I'll be honest, I have not had good luck with police in this state. I've been pulled over six times this year alone. So what are you saying? I haven't been pulled over in mass yet, though, but I do feel I, I know if I do get pulled over in Mass, it probably won't go as well as it does in New Hampshire. I've only gotten one ticket, so I can't really complain. I can well, complain, don't get me wrong. But um, I know if I went in Mass, it would probably be a lot worse. I think that means there's less corruption here. Oh, definitely. And, and uh, it's also the, more so the cops are just the, bored. The, yep, yeah, that's right. The more yeah. cops are bored... The less they're involved with, like, the petty underground crime stuff that they probably are involved with in, in mass. They're making money hand over fist in underground stuff in, in mass. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they don't have time to pull you over because they're, you know, protecting some dice game. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I'm getting tired of getting pulled over, though. I need to Why? Take it to court. There are opportunities. You're an activist. Why would I you actually, be upset about I, a ticket? I actually did. Uh, I I didn't take it to court. I just I did go pay. What? What? The ticket. Yeah, Why? I know. We, what the? Late. I don't know. I. You were handed an opportunity to do some activism. You said no. That's fine. No, but I didn't. Why? I didn't do complete. You know, I went to uh, when I paid it. I because uh, they required you to sign a uh, the um the the extortion letter. But on top of that, I had to submit an ID to pay it and I refused to and it ended up they, they literally brought like four different supervisors and like two why would you refuse to show ID to pay you're willing to give money but not ID yeah what's the point I, I wanted to make a scene and I wanted to like show these people I wanted to go up to the person that's taking my money and look him in the face and like you're stealing this money from me he doesn't get it well it was a she and she didn't seem too happy about it she doesn't get it no Trial and error. I don't know. Like uh, I probably should have taken it to a uh, to court, but uh, I did not. I probably should have done that though. Next time, I'm, I'm not sure telling I'll get you another, what to do. I'm but sure I'm, I'll get another ticket. I no. love going to court. I love it so much. The prosecutors just drop it every time I get a ticket. Oh, I heard about the last one. Yeah, yeah, that keeps happening. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, but th I want to go. That's the problem. Is like I'm ready. I I'm ready for uh, challenging jurisdiction. I'm gonna. You know, talk about how the judge and the prosecutor are working for the same team. 
I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, how, what evidence, what facts do they rely on to determine that the rules in RSA and state laws apply to me. Oh, we're going to have so much fun when we go into court. Some fun legal land stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're coming up on uh, near the end, but I had a question for you. Now, I believe I challenged you to a DDR dance-off. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that never happened. Yeah. The DDR pads are still in the basement of the KAC. I was just there last week. I put my air conditioner away, and they were there. Okay. So we need to have a dance-off on DDR. Okay. At some point. I'm, I'm down. Okay. You're going to school me, man. No, just no. So that I'm we not, know. I haven't done this in like six years. Yeah, but it's been um, a while for me. It's too. been a long time. I used to be decent at it. I actually used yeah. to be able to do doubles and stuff like wow. that when I was like back in my heyday. I don't know, like back back when like I played video games. So I would love to have a DDR dance off at some point. See who's a better dancer in regards to DDR. Sounds like so fun. We got to do it. We got to do it. Um. Anyways, uh. So can you mention your party? You want you want to pitch that for a second here yeah cool uh i'm throwing a party which is something i haven't really done before i mean yeah i went to lots of clubs in philly and my apartment was pretty cool but i never did anything like uh having a ballroom at a hotel and uh hiring lights and um even a (laughs) gone as far as hiring a fire marshal to turn off the smoke alarm if the uh, fog machine sets it off so um, we're really putting a lot of planning into this, and there's a great team of people putting it together. Um, it's a three-hour uh, dance party to benefit Ross Ulbricht's defense fund. He's, of course, the alleged admin of the Silk Road, a black market website. And, um, yeah, it's just going to be a great time. We're playing lots of Halloween-themed music. It was a little um, difficult scheduling this party because it was uh, – originally going to be on the ballroom on Halloween and the hotel decided to cancel on us um, saying that they were going to have their own Halloween party and that we couldn't compete with theirs so we're going to have ours the next day. Still going to be called Halloween but hey uh, it's even better on Saturday anyway. I mean it's we want it to crescendo. We want to have our, our best moment on Saturday night so it should be a lot of fun. It's from 9 to midnight. Hotel ballroom, Best Western Key, New Hampshire. Come on down. There's no cover. It's but it is, you know, it's a donation to Free Ross. Freeross.org if you want to send Bitcoin. Yeah, it's uh I'll be there. I don't know if I have a costume, but I, I will I'll, I'll try. You don't need to have one. a costume. Yeah, but I would definitely uh I will be there and I'll donate some some Bitcoin to Ross. Cool. Uh, Chris Cantwell is starting us off. He's gonna be doing a uh comedy set, uh f- uh five minute stand up bit to start us off at nine. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Something to get everyone in the room, and then the music starts, and boom, dance party. Sweet. Um, Shire Dude's also participating. You want to yeah. tell us yeah, tell what, us you, what, what are you doing? Um, so we're going to have, like, projectors set up, and um, we're going to be projecting some, like, video. And so I'm trying to make some kind of, like, trippy, like, Halloween video. And um, it's going to be very Shire Dude. That's that's for sure. Yeah. Well, there, is, there is only one Shire Dude. <laughs> it's gonna be It's going to be something that you'll want to... Like I don't I don't know I don't want to make it too interesting because then people will stop dancing but uh, it's gonna be pretty ridiculous. All right, well that is beautiful. <laughs> um, now also one last thing we are doing uh, New Hampshire Independence Outreach in Keene this Saturday uh, at Pumpkin Fest. So I'm definitely looking forward to that because that's kind of been my uh, my forte as of late. That's been my what I've been grasping onto. Um, I would love to see the federal government long no longer having tyranny over my life you know get rid of at least 80 percent of the government over me yeah it's a long road it's building up the culture in new hampshire and what better place where there's a thousands and thousands of people in one small little tiny geographical area it's the perfect place to do that because real independence true freedom happens in your head and what you're doing by spreading that information and by doing that outreach during pumpkin fest is you're freeing people yeah, you're you're freeing them one at a time. So thank you for doing that. I'll well, be filming it. Yes, and I I hope you get uh, my good side when you film. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, you can find all the content of this show 
at rebelloveshow.com. Go like us on uh, our Facebook page, watch us on YouTube, and uh, download us on iTunes and Stitcher. You can also find my content at vrebel.com. And Shire, where can everyone find your beautiful face and shirt? <laughs> Shiredude.com. Well, that's, that's simple enough. Right. Yes. That's it. And donate some Bitcoin to you. Oh, yeah. And Derek, where can everyone find you at? Just go to DerekJ.me. That's the easiest place to find everything I do. Uh, links to Victimless Crime Spree, all my raw videos, even blogs from when I was in jail. DerekJ.me. Go check it out, kids. All right, and we are out. So uh, peace. 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 Hey, thanks, guys.